Hello, welcome to Vicky Makes and Builds. I've got an exciting one today, as you can probably tell. My 33,000 piece Educa wildlife puzzle has arrived and it's in my living room. Right there, it's right there. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so this is an unboxing video for you today. Now, I'm th there'll be all different camera angles because um, this puzzle is like a whole different kettle of fish to other puzzles that I've ever unboxed or uh, reviewed or anything. Uh, <laughs> because it's just, I mean, it's a big puzzle, but it's in such a huge box. <laughs> as well so i uh yes i've had to adjust accordingly because um it's just hard to fit in to a camera lens it's so big so the story behind this puzzle is this is one of my dream puzzles i've been wanting to get it and do it for quite a long time now it's a big puzzle and it was obviously quite expensive and that really is what's been putting me off getting it so far um but it has been available for me to buy on amazon for quite a while um and i <laughs> I started putting it out that if I reached a thousand subscribers on my channel, when I reached a thousand subscribers, I would buy this puzzle and do it. And um, so, you know, that was out there and that was all fine. But then I actually, um, I've actually got more than a thousand subscribers now. Which, by the way, I would like to thank you all so much for. Um, the support for the channel has just been overwhelmingly amazing. And I, I really do thank you uh, for from the bottom of my heart for all the support um, and for all the people that subscribe to me and watch my videos. Thank you for that. Um, so I, I reached a thousand subscribers and I thought, it, but it happened faster than I thought it was going to, which is a good thing. Uh, but... I sort of realised then that I was going to have to actually uh, actually buy this puzzle because that's what I said I was going to do and um, I didn't really know how I was going to do it. But anyway, long story short, I figured out a way that to get it and I clicked buy. And it took a little while to come. Um, Educ is a Spanish-based uh, company, so um, I think it had to come from Spain. Uh, so it's been on a fairly long journey but it actually came a little faster than I was expecting. They told me the 4th of May. Uh, so yeah, it was sooner than that, which was great. Now, there is just a small amount of drama uh, <laughs> already. I haven't even opened the bags yet um, in the story of this puzzle. And that is that um, when it arrived, it hadn't been very well packaged. Um, and unfortunately, uh, there was some damage to this box. Now, this box is made of wood. It's a wooden box. It's like a a crate, really, to all intents and purposes. It's the best way I can describe it. It's a crate with puzzle pieces in. Um, so it wasn't wrapped. It was just wrapped in bubble wrap. It wasn't in a cardboard box. And uh, it, the bubble wrap had obviously got kind of dislodged at some stage. And uh, there were corners of the box peeking out. And I think it must have been bashed at some point because um, there was a panel at the bottom here that was starting to come away from the side. And I was disappointed obviously um as you would be when you wait so long for a puzzle that's your dream and um when you obviously pay quite a high amount for it um so i don't want to kind of dwell on the negatives too much but essentially what happened was it wasn't damage that was um irreparable i decided that i could probably fix it and I didn't want to have to send it back and get a refund and then reorder it and wait for another one and for potentially that to happen again. So I decided to contact Amazon and the the people that sold me the puzzle um, actually refunded me the postage, which was quite significant. So and they were really good, in fairness to them. They were really good. They, they There was no questions asked. Um, I took some photos and they refunded me the difference. And I have fixed the box. I'll put some pictures up for you. Um, it just took a bit of wood glue and, uh, and I've managed to uh, put it back together. So it's fine now. 
and I can now open it up and show you uh, what's on the box, what's inside, uh, what's on any paperwork and things like that. And yeah, just give you a wee tour around the 33,600 piece wildlife puzzle. Here we go. Okay, so I'm going to start with the top. Um, this is, uh, as I said, it's like a wooden crate uh, type of design and the lid slides. So there's a little notch here and you can slide the lid in and out. This is actually um, a piece of card that's like stuck on you can just about see me put my finger under there uh it's stuck on to the top of the box so here you've got the image so i'm just going to do a, a sort of a slow pan across the image it's a panorama um so it's hard to get into one picture but over here it's a jungle scene you've got lots and lots of trees and greenery um and there are a myriad um of animals uh scattered across the picture so over here on the left you've got some lions got what looks like a buffalo uh snakes and things in the trees uh you've got uh as you move along there's like a water area in the middle there and you've got some vines at the top with kind of birds and uh looks like an orangutan there in the middle we've got some flamingos uh moving even further along you've got more water Looks like there's a hippo and a couple of elephants. Um, you've got plenty of birds flying around. There's a rainbow in the background. And then still moving along, you've got some rhino, some zebra, um, giraffe, gorilla, and so on and so forth. So it's a jungle scene and it's crammed full of animals. So that's the picture of the puzzle on the box. Up here, you've got um, uh, this information with different languages and it just says sheet with the picture inside. So I'll expect to find that inside. It's obviously an educa puzzle. It has a 33,600 piece, piece count and there's the educa logo. Now coming down here, we've got the signature of the artist. Um, and it talks a bit about uh, the artist on the back. So I will come back to that. Um, then you've got uh, the puzzle with the greatest number of pieces in the world. So I assume that means the biggest puzzle in the world. And perhaps it was at one stage, but I think that there are bigger puzzles out there now. Um, but still, it's up there. I mean, it's a biggie. There's no denying that. Um and then here you've got kind of in the background, uh, you've got kind of just snippets of the image. There's a snake there, which looks like that snake there. And then at the top, you've got a similar thing with some of the uh, flowers. So nice little kind of picture there. And then you've got the size of the puzzle, right? Well, this will be of interest to most of you, I'm sure. It's 570 by 157 centimeters. Now, I'm going to show you what that is in inches in a graphic just now. So um, if you work in inches, you can um, you can obviously get a better idea of the size. Uh, these these four languages here specify the name of the puzzle, which is wildlife. They do another puzzle, Educo, 24,000 piece puzzle called Life. Um, and this one is called Wildlife. Um, and I love that puzzle as well to be honest uh but i saw something about this one that really drew me so uh this one's wildlife uh it says real size detail so that refers to this here which is a close-up of a tree frog uh i think it's a tree frog and um that's it there looking teeny tiny on this picture so you've got a better idea of the scale uh of the thing uh when you look at this frog kind of magnified um and then that's pretty much it i think that's just like a little reference number so that is the top of the box now the side of the box is it's the same on both of the long sides you've got um it says puzzle passion at the bottom which i think might be their kind of customer service um side of things uh, puzzlepassion.com i think is like their customer service side and then it says puzzle and 33,600, which is the piece count, and it's got the Educa logo. And it's just the exact same on the other side. I'll kind of take you around. That's the end. It's got a little um, 
pull handle because at the opposite end it's kind of like luggage it's like a suitcase uh you've got these casters these wheels um which and you can see here a little bit where this was the bit where it came away from the edge uh there was a big gap here and you could actually see the screws so i had to really give it a good bash to get it back again flush and then uh well before i did that i obviously applied the wood glue so i don't think i did a bad job there's a couple of little chips which is unfortunate but um i can live with that and then this is just kind of like a little stand so that when you stand it up on its end it'll just stand um and it won't fall over so that's what the handle idea is at the top you can kind of drag it along and then on this side as i said before uh, just the same info as on the other side. 33,600 Educa Puzzle. Uh, puzzle Passion logo at the bottom. So now I'm just going to uh, just uh, pause the video for a second while I turn uh, this baby upside down, which isn't easy because it's really heavy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll be back just momentarily. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, this is the back of the puzzle and it's another uh, sheet stuck to the back. It's come up a bit there. That I think that happened in transit. Um, it's just a, a big kind of sheet of card stuck to the back. And as you can see, quite a lot more information. Now, a lot of this information comes in several languages. So only some of it is, only a kind of proportion of it is pertinent to you, depending on what language you speak. So starting from the top, we've obviously got Educa Puzzle, 33,600 pieces. That's the size of it. Again, uh, Puz Puzzle Passion logo and the Educa logo. Now then, we've got uh, the picture, a bit smaller this time. And we have um, a little bit of information in this red bubble sheet with the picture inside so we know that there's a poster which is great and that one again says the puzzle with the greatest number of pieces in the world so that's just the same as what it says on the front so now finding the right language we've got we've got spanish first so that makes sense with it being a spanish company We've got Wildlife was created exclusively for this spectacular puzzle of 33,600 pieces by Adrian Chesterman, an English artist based in Malaga. According to Chesterman, working on such a large scale and on a subject that I really like has been a very exciting challenge. I have been drawing animals almost all my life and I love nature and the natural world, which means that drawing a giant scene with the wonders of the animal kingdom has been a real delight. Uh, so Adrian Chesterman, uh, what does it say there? Um, that's whose signature is on the front of the box. And he is the person responsible for uh, this lovely artwork. Um, uh, this paragraph at the bottom just says, the puzzle is a real challenge for jigsaw enthusiasts. I have no doubt that it will be. Uh, with its levels of detail and colour, uh, that take you to the natural exuberance of Africa. Lions, elephants, giraffes and animals of all types are shown in a flourishing jungle that can be assembled piece by piece. Now, there are a lot of colours in this, but I am just ever so slightly daunted by the sheer amount of green <laughs> in this puzzle. <laughs> My goodness. Uh, yeah, that's going to be... Um, yeah. Well, we'll see. We'll see how that's going to be. I don't want to predict... Uh, I don't want to predict uh, tough aspects to it. Maybe it'll be fine. Maybe it'll be fine. Uh, so that is information about the artist. Um, down here, you've got shown in real size. Oh, right. OK, so that's that's kind of a perspective um, size of the puzzle pieces. General kind of idea of the size of the puzzle pieces. Then here, you've got more... Tension. Puzzle measurements are approximate and may vary with respect to production. OK, uh, again, this is just the same thing in loads of different languages. Keep this information for future reference. OK, that's fine. We've got all the different uh, social media logos there. That's the website for Educa. Uh, that's the, um, the address in Spain where it was made. Uh, you've got a barcode made in the EU in Spain. You've got the Educa logo again. 
And this bit here, I believe, refers to the missing pieces. So it says here, um, lost pieces service, the only one of its kind in the world. High quality materials and perfectly fitting pieces made in Europe. Okay, so you can get replacement pieces by the looks of things. There's a QR code here for presumably this uh, website here, puzzlepassion.com. Uh, for more information, go to, yeah, puzzlepassion.com. So um, that is all fine and good. So really, that's the outside of the box sorted. We just now need to crack it open and have a look at these bags of pieces. <laughs> okay, so I've set the camera up um, not as an overhead because I because it, it's just so big and I kind of wanted to be in the picture. You also got a Grace cameo as well, which is a bonus. Um, so I, I will have to kind of duck a wee bit sometimes to kind of get in, but uh, for the most part, um, the focus will be on the puzzle, uh, which is here. So the lid, as I said earlier, is a sliding lid. So there's a little notch here and you can use it just to slide the lid all the way out. And I'll finally unbox this amazingly humongous puzzle. Uh, I'm just going to put it down there. Uh, feel free to lie on it if you wish, Grace. Okay, so as you would expect, full of pieces. Now then, with this puzzle, as soon as I uh, as soon as I bought it and I knew it was coming, I um, did a little bit of research on it. I watched some YouTube videos and um, I discovered that this is divided into 10 bags of 3,360 pieces. So it's kind of like 10, just over 3,000 piece puzzles. And they are sort of long, narrow sections, tall and narrow sections. Um, as I said, it's a panorama. So basically, um, their sections are just beside each other all the way along. I'll try and show you a graphic so you can see a little bit better what I mean. So the actual sections themselves are quite long. They're sort of tall and narrow. I envisage that being a little bit tricky for the purposes of filming the build because... Grace, stop scratching. Thank you. I envisage that being a little bit tricky um, for the purposes of the build because usually when I record, I record in kind of a landscape format. That's what most of the puzzles are shaped like. And this one is just a bit taller. So I don't know if I will, I don't think I will record it in a kind of a landscape format. I won't put the camera at the end of the table because the problem is then you'll see kind of off the edge of the table and it's all going to look a bit messy so it's entirely probable that I will I mean this table doesn't really fit a 3000 piece puzzle on it anyway so as is my usual kind of method with large puzzles um there will probably be boards involved my A1 foam boards and um that potentially I might do kind of the top section of the puzzle kind of on the left side of my table and the bottom section on the right side of the table. I'm not sure yet. I will see how it pans out. Now, there is a possibility that I might occasionally mix bags. And when I say mix bags, I'm not talking about all 10 bags. Um, I just don't think I'd be able to practically do that in here. Um, but what I might do is mix some of the central sections, the adjacent sections, maybe do two or three 6,000 piece sections of it, um, rather than just doing 10 individual 3,000 piece kind of videos. Um, as part of my uh, looking into this puzzle when I first bought it, I obviously I, I put pictures up on social media. You may have seen some of the photos of my um, purchase page on Amazon. Some people having seen those pictures ended up reaching out to me and giving me their advice on the puzzle, uh, you know, because they'd done it before. And there was a chap that I spoke to who um, was telling me about uh the amount of green because i was talking i was talking about there was a lot of green in the puzzle 
and he told me that the, the parts with the most green are the parts around the edge because if you look at the image it's like a big um, sort of sideways oval where it's kind of framed by all the greenery. I mean there is greenery in the middle as well but really that bit's sort of open and you've got like the water features and some of the animals kind of more in the background you've got a bit of sky um but at the edges of the puzzle you've got quite heavy sort of foliage going on so he was saying that the outside edges outside edge panels are actually the ones with the most green so um i was thinking perhaps a good way to go with this would be to do the, the left hand edge as a 3000 piece section and the right hand edge as a 3000 piece section and then the the sets of two in the middle do those as mixed bag sections. So potentially I could do the first video on the first section on the left hand side, the second video on the next two sections, then the next two after that, that would be five, then the next two after that, that'd be seven, then the next two after that, that would be nine and then one at the end and that would be ten. I would like to do it going from left to right. Um, the other thing uh, that that chap said to me and also something I discovered uh, from looking at um, a YouTube video on this um, is that the bags aren't really very well labelled. <laughs> so, and I've had a look at the bags and uh, I can corroborate that. Um, they're not like Ravensburger with a big giant A and a B on them. Um, they just seem to be more, it seems to be a more complicated um, set of numbers that you have to figure out. And I still haven't figure out, figured out which bag <laughs> corresponds to which section yet. So I'm going to need to be careful of that and make sure I'm opening the correct bags because if I mix the wrong bags, that's going to be really confusing. Um, so I'll need to keep an eye out for that. Before I look at the bags and the numbers on the bags, I will just pull these out. These are the only two pieces of paperwork in this box. Most of the information is actually on the outside of the box. And all this says is um, important. This registration number must be retained in order to facilitate the request for replacement pieces. To request replacements for lost pieces, please contact our customer service section at puzzlepassion.com. Um, and it's just more languages on the bags. This is the poster, which, which it actually mentions. And the poster is a big, long panorama. And I'm going to try and tilt it that way so that it's not reflecting the, the ceiling light. Um, it's quite hard to fit in. I'll maybe pop a, a photograph up of it for you just now. But it's just the same as the box image. Um, just the image of the puzzle in full. Um, and you can see it's a wide, it's a wide panorama puzzle. Uh, so that's going to be handy having a poster that I can refer to. And that just leaves the pieces. <laughs> um, of which, like I said, there are many. So we've got 10 bags, all packaged the same way. Nice, strong plastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get the bags out and move this um, crate to the side because it's quite awkward trying to kind of lean on it and look inside it. Um, I've sort of done with the box element of this unboxing now. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna take the bags out and just have a wee look at them, have a look at the serial numbers and things, maybe get a wee glance at the pieces through the bag. I'm not opening any bags today. I'm actually halfway through another Edgica puzzle at the moment. Um, and I've just finished another one and I'll be doing a couple more puzzles before I start this. Uh, so I don't want to open the pieces today and run the risk of um, you know, just having them lying around and potentially losing them. So um, I'll try and sort of see what I can see through the bags uh, and I'll obviously go into more detail about that when I actually start building the puzzle. But I'm just going to pause this just for a minute while I shift this box out of the way. Okay, so I have them stacked up here in front of me in two piles. There's five in this pile and five bags in this pile. And um, I'm just going to kind of just move them to one side and just use one bag uh, as an example. Um, so, okay. Um, Looking through this, it looks as though there are, there's a lot of uh, standard piece shapes, uh, the kind of the two ins and two outs. 
and I'm seeing a couple of edge pieces. Um, it also appears that we have these funny shaped pieces uh, where there's kind of a concave section and a convex section and they just kind of abut each other. They just kind of sit together. Um, so, I mean, there's something similar in the entering the bedroom puzzle, a similar idea to that. Um, in entering the bedroom, it's a slightly different kind of pattern, the way they go together. Um, in entering the bedroom, they have another kind of unique piece shape on either side of those, uh, with like a, with a feature where one side has an in and an out. Um, so they have, uh, it's kind of a funny little quirk about Educa. They have sort of normal pieces, normal pieces, normal pieces, and then suddenly just these random kind of weird piece shapes that just sit in amongst all the normal pieces. <laughs> so, I mean, that's good. I mean, it makes it different, uh, but it looks like we've got kind of a similar idea here. Um, we, um, <clears throat> I'm trying to find a piece shape that's not... Ah, I found one. Right, I actually thought it was going to be all standard piece shapes apart from those funny ones, but I have found another one with three ins and one out. So it looks as though um, all the different piece shapes or most of the different piece shapes are represented. It's hard to tell without opening the bags, um, but that's kind of the gist I'm getting here. Um, obviously, mostly there's another one with three ins and an out. Uh, it's obviously, oh, there's one with three outs and an in. So yeah, it's obviously mostly the standards, but there are other ones as well. So that's good. Um, the, the image on the pieces looks really bright. I mean, that was one thing I loved, uh, or I'm loving about the entering the bedroom puzzle, which I'm doing just now. The, the image, the pieces just really show the image just so brightly like it's it's really true to the box image it uh, and really colorful and these look to be the same um so yeah it's the blue cardboard backing i can't really tell at the moment but i would imagine there'll be a fair amount of puzzle dust um if entering the bedroom is anything to go by i imagine there'd be quite a lot of puzzle dust um so yeah, I mean, as far as pieces go, there's not much to discern through the bag, but it looks as though, um, yeah, there's nothing kind of uh, sort of odd going on really with it. Just uh, nothing different that's kind of throwing me. Can't see any stuck together. Can't see any ripped. Um, so that's good. Now then, with in regards to these numbers on the bag, if you look at every bag, there is an area here where it says ref, which I assume is short for reference, 16066. And that's the same number on each bag. So you can't differentiate using that. Uh, then it says N control 160. And again, that is the same on every bag. The last number is a six digit number. And this particular one says 001835. That number is different on each bag. So that's 001835. This one is... 001834. Uh, that one, for example, is 828. So it appears as though it's the last two digits that are different. Presumably, if the numbers are sequential, you'd have 834 going beside 835, and you'd have 828 going down here, and so on. Uh, but I'm not sure if it's as clear cut as that, whether the lowest number is the left side and the highest number is the right side. I'll find that out. Um, I'll find that out. I do think the sequential numbers do go next to each other, so they will be adjacent. I don't think it's kind of a mishmash, but um, I had a look at the pieces in the highest number bag, which is this one here. And I had a, num a look at the pieces in the lowest number bag, which is this one here. And I was trying to figure out just from identifying pieces, really, uh, what which side was which. Um, it was obvious that, that this one in particular was an end. It was an edge because there was a corner piece in it. Um, I didn't find a corner piece in here, but I'm, I'm you know, fairly certain that this is the opposite end. 
However, I found in this bag what looked to be a bit of a flamingo's leg standing in the water. And if I look at the picture, there are flamingos on the right hand edge of this puzzle, but not the left hand edge. There are some in the middle, but not on the left hand edge. So that tells me that these numbers go in reverse order from left to right. So the highest number represents the left hand section. And then as the numbers go down, the sections move along from left to right. Now, why they have chosen to do it that way, I do not know. Why in a puzzle with 10 bags of pieces, you wouldn't just label them one, two, three, four, five, or whatever, or, or A, B, C, D, E, or what, I just, I think that probably would have been a good idea to put a little booklet in uh, just with a diagram showing you. <laughs> I think that would have been a better idea. I've had to really kind of delve into this to figure it out. Um, and unless you really want to just do it in random sections uh, that don't necessarily come together until you've finished, um, then yeah, it doesn't really seem to make a lot of sense. But you know, I got round it. It's fine. And there's plenty of people out there who um, are willing to answer questions about it. Other people have done it. And um, it just so happened that uh, this chap on Reddit reached out to me to give me some advice about the puzzle. So uh, I really did appreciate that. And um, uh, the video that I watched on YouTube, which I'll link in the description below, does talk a little bit about the, the numbers on the bags and how they're in reverse order. And I think it maybe threw them a little bit as well. So I'm glad. I'm glad I actually did a little bit of looking into this because I think that would have, um, I think that would have stressed me out <laughs> if I was building the puzzle and it just was like the the other end to what I thought it was. I don't suppose there's anything wrong with working from right to left, but I don't know, you know, just seems more normal to work from left to right. Anyway, so that is what I am going to do. Um, quite when I'll get to do it is anybody's guess. I think it will probably be late June now, maybe, before I get started on this. I, as I said earlier, I've still got the other half of the 6,000 piece enter in the bedroom puzzle to do by Educa as well. Uh, so I've have to finish that first. Um, I actually would really love to do one of my 5,000 piece puzzles as well. Um, that would be great if I could get one of those done um, and one or two others. Uh, so yeah, so I think I'd probably realistically be looking at around about June um, for starting the first section of this uh, amazing puzzle but I really cannot wait to open the first bag I'm just so looking forward to it and I'm so excited that I finally got it I finally got my one of my dream puzzles um, and that is all thanks to um, you lovely viewers out there who are watching my videos and subscribing to my channel and just supporting me um, in a way that's just made me so grateful and um, happy. And I do thank you so, so much uh, for supporting the channel um, and just coming along on this exciting puzzle journey with me. It's uh, It's been absolutely, um, absolutely brilliant. So thank you again for that. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then please do subscribe. Um, and then you can watch me do this, uh, this and other uh, awesome puzzles as well. So, um, Anyway, I think that's pretty much all I've got to say on this. Um, in the meantime, happy puzzling and I will see you in the next video. 